You're listening to the Tommy Schnermacher Show on News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. Russian government hackers uh, penetrated the computer network of the Democratic National Committee. They had access to the entire database of research on Donald Trump. And they the hack was so effective, they could read all email, they could read all chat traffic. On the line with me to explain some of this, uh, Sean Tuma, cyber and data security attorney. Good morning. Good morning. So what kind of material is it that these Russian hackers actually accessed? Well, there were two buckets of material, uh, so to speak. One is the uh, database that the DNC had gathered of opposition research on Donald Trump, uh, which could be any number of things, basically background dirt that they probably found on him and collected over time. And the other uh, is another group of the Russian hackers was monitoring email and chat traffic uh, from members of the DNC. So why would they want to have this information? Well, you know, uh, one of the main theories that's being advanced is that there's so much information out there about other politicians who have been running for office for years, whereas Donald Trump is new to politics and uh, doesn't have that much of a record out there, so they're trying to gather information to give them ideas on on how he negotiates, on potential interests he may have, uh, you know, uh, and obviously looking for something to to blackmail the man with as well. Now, uh, Mm. could this help uh, Donald Trump? I mean, it puts the the Russians and the Democrats on the same page of of nasty things about Donald Trump. You know, yeah, and and that's interesting because a lot of people see this as as an attack on Trump, but I, I... think that there, it certainly can help him because it shows, uh, like you say, that alignment between the Russians and the DNC and both wanting to stop him in a way. But it also, if this information comes out, you know, sometimes it's better to know what your opposition has against you than to let them use it at their own choosing. Now, who has, who has access to this information? I mean, is it Russian government officials? Are other people going to have access to it? You know, uh, we don't really know for sure. Uh, the way that, that the company CrowdStrike, which is the cybersecurity firm that went in to investigate this, they, they've been able to tie this to these two front organizations for the Russian government uh, based upon the nature of that, the hacks and, and some of their telltale signs. But we don't really know who got the information beyond that. Um, We suspect and assume that it's uh, Russian government leaders and intelligence agencies, agencies, but we're not sure about that. Is it something that was easy for them to do? Uh, No. Well, that's a a good question. Easy for them. uh, You know, the the attackers who went after the DNC are state-sponsored, you know, the very best there are. These aren't your your criminal gangs just trying to steal some information to go sell it and make a buck. These are highly trained, uh, basically cyber spies, who who are the best that there are. And and I'm sure this was not that hard for them, though it would be very difficult for most other hackers uh, to get in, most likely. Do you think uh, that uh, there's similar attacks against the uh, the Republicans? Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, here's the thing. You know, when you're when you're at high level politics like this, high level national politics, you should should assume from the beginning that you're going to be attacked by either your opponents, uh, you know, Republicans getting people to to try to get information on Democrats or vice versa, or foreign state. Wait, so uh, they hack into that. each other. The Republicans and Democrats hack into each other's databases. You're saying. Uh, I'm saying you should anticipate right. that. You should anticipate that, that people are going to be trying to break in. And so you should then uh, put appropriate defenses in place to prepare for that. But back in the two, 2012 election, uh, foreign governments, Iran, China, and Russia, all had hacked into both Republican and Democratic national committees. Oh, so it, it, this is just ordinary. It happens all the time. It's no big deal, right? 
Unfortunately, it, it does happen all the time, but uh, I would hope people would see this as a big deal and would, would establish appropriate safeguards and try to protect against it better. How did we find out about this? Um, what the news is reporting is that the DNC brought in a company called CrowdStrike, or they did a computer cleanup, as they called it, back in April, and discovered some anomalies in their systems. And then they brought in this company, CrowdStrike, uh, which are highly trained professionals at investigating and defending against this kind of stuff. And that's how they then discovered it. Do you think we'll see some incriminating information about Hillary Clinton? Some people have su suggested that that might be coming up in a few weeks. Do you expect that to happen? Uh, regarding her email server? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think we probably will. Um, there are news reports out now saying that the Russian government is planning on releasing some of the email traffic that they were able to intercept from her private servers. And, you know, the Russians, I mean, we've, uh, for my whole lifetime, we've always, as Americans, had the, you know the moral superiority over Russia. We thought, and now the Russians will love nothing more than to uh, poke their finger back in in the U.S.'s eye and say, "Uh huh, you know, we've got your stuff too." <laughs> you know, you guys aren't doing it quite as as well as you think you are. Sean Tuma, my guest, cyber and data security uh, attorney. Uh, who do you think uh, the Russians would want to see in the White House? Would they rather have Donald Trump to deal with or Hillary Clinton? You know, you never really know. I mean, there have been positive comments exchanged between Trump and, and uh, Vladimir Putin. And you don't know if that's genuine or if they're trying to subvert the other side. Um, I, I really have no idea. Um, they act like uh, Russians act like they they want to see Trump based upon the statements made by Putin. But on the other hand, he could be doing that to, uh, you know, have kind of the, the reverse psychology effect. I thank you very much. A pleasure talking to you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Sean Tuma, cyber and data security attorney.